Hi, I'm Ashley, and I bought a shed that we are turning into a she shed, aka my dream craft room, and this series is the process of how we did that from start to finish, so I hope you'll follow along for the final reveal. If you guys watched the last episode, we got the trim finished inside and outside of the windows. Um, on the inside of the shed, not the like outside exterior part of the shed, but on the inside we did the inside casing and put trim around the windows. This episode, we're gonna go in with some caulking and try to make it look seamless. Now, I ended up doing two layers with the caulking and I sanded in between each layer and looking at it now, I could possibly go back in with a third layer of the caulking, sand it again, and do another coat of paint. But I'm not going to because it just adds character into the shed. Nothing is perfect in here. Nothing is like perfectly seamless. You can see seams and I'm okay with that. Again, it adds texture. It adds character. Now for the trim, we used one by fours. So this is not like actual trim. It's a rough piece of lumber. It's not nice and smooth. I refuse to pay for trim. Trim is so expensive. It's going in my shed. I'm going to be crafting and painting and glitter is going to, like, I'm not spending a ton of money on trim. So I'm okay with the one by fours. And when I sanded them, I only used a 220 grit sandpaper. So it wasn't anything rough that was going to smooth them out. I could have went back in with something a little, you know, stronger, maybe like an 80 grit or a 60 grit sandpaper and got them completely smooth. But that is never, has never been my intention is to have everything perfect. Now I did want to attempt to make it look seamless. And whenever I painted everything, a final coat with the white paint, it does help some. But this seam here, this is the same on all the windows. It's a pretty big seam. And I did not want to leave that exposed. So this, this actually took, I think, three layers of caulking on the inside part. So what I did is I would lay a bead of caulking down and I would take a baby wipe and go over it to help smooth it out. And then I used the caulking that was left on the baby wipe, like to go back over parts of it again and stuff, adding layers after each layer would dry. So that's the first layer and now I'm going to go on the inside seams and up the sides. So as you can see after the first layer it's still pretty predominant. It's not as bad as it was but it's still there so that's why on the insides I ended up doing three layers. But on the outsides of the windows where the nail holes are and the little seams where each board butts up to each other, I only did two coats. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away, I let my head down if I want. To just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time doesn't sound like fun. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. So much better. I want Let yourself be free and maybe you will find that there is more to life than being pretty Honey, let's just face it You can do better Let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better So much better
Here's where I'm going in with the sander to sand everything down in between coats. Again, I did not use a rough grit sandpaper, so it was just kind of taking off a light layer of the caulking. I tried to smooth it down as much as I could with the baby wipe, so this process would be a little bit easier, and it was. It actually turned out okay. And then I went back in with the second coat of caulking, sanded again, and then we painted everything. You can do better. Okay, this was a big boo-boo on my end. I, when I cut the board to go around the plug-in, I cut it too much. And when I initially just looked at it, I thought, ah, the lights, the plug-in cover will cover it. I actually bought large plug-in covers to cover quite a few mistakes. Um, there's always something you can get to help cover up your mistakes in life, okay? So I uh, took some wood fill. I took a piece of wood that come out of there, stuck it in there, and then I took some wood fill to go over the rest of the seams. And now we're just going back in to sand it down and smooth it out. So whenever I paint the trim on the windows, I can also go over this area and get this fixed up. And now we have some fun things finally happening. I know that doing the caulking and sanding and all that stuff, it's like the boring stuff. Here, we're getting the metal put up on the ceiling and we're getting the recessed slice put in. So my cousin Sammy, he's an electrician. He's the one that ran the electricity through the shed for me. He also ran the electricity to do the recessed lighting. So him and my dad did the measurements, figured out where the lights needed to go. And there's this special circular um, blade that goes on the drill that is made for cutting through metal. And I got it slightly, like slightly smaller than the outside perimeters of the recessed lights because they'll just slip up in there. There's two little clips on each light that keeps it from falling out. So he went through, my dad was actually putting up the metal um, on the other side of Sammy. You can't see him, but he was putting up the metal sheets, him and me and my husband was helping while Sammy was going through as we went and would cut out the holes for the recess lighting. So we were all working together, trying to get some stuff done, making big progress. And you guys, let me tell you, You'll see the lights here in just a few minutes on, but when they are on at night, holy cow, this place is lit up like the 4th of July. I really wanted to make a reference about wanting a hot dog, <laughs> but you can see it from like a hot second down the road, right? Like you can just see it's like it's glowing up here at my house and I love it because at nighttime when I'm out here and I have the lights on, it's literally the same as if the sun was shining and the lights coming through from the sun like I love it it makes it great whenever I'm filming videos at night and stuff so really excited for all these I, this was a lot of work it was hard on them to do all this but I'm really glad that they did and I'm thankful for it because it turned out so stinking good ladies if you ever want to make your hands stronger and have a better grip strength grab you a pair of tin snips and some metal and start cutting because, I mean, this is going to strengthen you up big time. <laughs> the hardest part, other than the tin snips, about putting the metal up was the beams. So my dad had to cut a hole out for the beam to, you know, live in. But then he also had to cut a slit out for it to slip over top of the beam. So you can still see the cuts. They, um, they're not nothing major. It doesn't bother me any, but you can still see them in here. I don't, you don't really pay attention to them unless you're looking at them. So here I'm up in the dormer getting it um, sealed up and trying to make it seamless. I, I did my best. I do not like going up past the third step on any ladder. Um, it's funny because when I was a kid, like my dad had me on roofs. You know, I climbed tree stands to go hunting. Like, I didn't care. We used to jump out of the barn at my papa's farm. Like, <laughs> but now as an adult, no thanks. Three steps and that's enough. I can't do it. My anxiety starts to kick in. I need back on the ground. <laughs> 
But with that being said, I, I did my best up here. It is not as smooth or it doesn't look as good, I guess, as the window is, but it's up in the dorm where you can't really see it unless you're looking for it, and I don't mind, so it worked out pretty good. Now, my husband did help me some with the putting the caulking up in the dormers, but I was, again, I wasn't going past that third step. I really needed to be on the fourth step, but I wasn't doing it. My, my body and my anxiety said, no, I'm not the young, fearless Ashley I used to be. Here I'm showing you where I'm adding the second layer of caulking around the inside of the windows on that seam. And you can see the seam is still pretty predominant. This caulking that I have, I think it's like a 20 minute dry time. So it dries pretty quick, but it's still going to settle down in that crack some. And that's why I had to do three layers around the inside of the windows. So these light switch covers, not light switch, these are plug-in covers. <laughs> um, I got some paint on them. This one isn't too bad, there's just like little specks. This one has a big blob of paint. I tried washing them with soap and water, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't come off of there. So we are going to break them. <laughs> I'm gonna paint them. Ultra matte Rust-Oleum paint. This is really, really good paint. Next up, there's one small wall left that we need to put the barn siding on and it's the wall where the electrical panel is. And I waited until like last minute to do this in case I decided to run more electricity, which I'm glad I did because we did run wire under the shed for me to have an outlet put in the floor where my craft desk is going to go. Now I don't have that in, like my desk is in here now, but I don't have the outlet in just yet because once I get cabinets put on the back, I'll probably end up moving my standing craft desk. And so I don't want to put the outlet in the floor until I'm like 100% for sure where I want it to go. But the electricity is ran underneath of the shed for that. Um, this is insulation. Again, you guys, if you've been following along, you know my hatred for insulation. And you know what I learned now? We actually need to go back in. I would love to do this before winter, but I don't know that it's going to happen. But we need to go in and insulate underneath of the shed so that it'll help a little bit with the floors being so cold. But had to get a few more sheets of insulation put in and um, get the barn siding put up on this wall so we can get this wall finally finished. There's many ways to be happy. Throughout this build, I have become really good friends with the chop saw and really good friends with the jigsaw. I'm starting to become friends with the table saw, but that thing still scares the shit out of me. So <laughs> I like the chop saw better. I don't know. I feel safer with it. And the jigsaw doesn't scare me, but surely that table saw. I didn't use the table saw in this episode, but I just, just was thinking about it and how I'm becoming friends with power tools. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to be ready. You just gotta trust the right you don't have to be scary You just gotta fall Now I didn't film us completing this wall but we cut out around that outlet and then we also had to cut out around the electrical box and then we got that finished was able to paint it all white to match the rest of the shed 
and the, the final wall was complete as far as the barn siding goes. We also ran electricity for an outlet to be outside. So whenever I build a front porch, I can plug little lights in and things. So I'm really excited for that. And then we ended up at Lowe's and I picked out flooring. So stay tuned for episode nine, where we're going to add flooring into the shed. And you guys, it turns out absolutely amazing. and makes me want to change the flooring in my house. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next episode.